Greetings, mortals! With me now is Terry Olson, master of the monster pit. Welcome, Hello, everybody. Terry. Yes, it is good to have you here with me, the Skull. Such Terry, an honor. You should be honored. Tell me, Terry, how many monsters have you known? Oh, so many. I think I've known 666 monsters. I hope I don't meet any more. Mm, that is a high number indeed. And yet you live. I'm tricky that way. Excellent. You must be swift and clever. What is your secret origin? Well, Skull, I was born in a cranberry bog. And that's how I was grown. From the vines and the berries. Perhaps the monsters do not enjoy cranberries, and that is how you will survive so well. They are bitter. Mm. How did you meet Goodman? I met him at a convention uh, almost 10 years ago. A cranberry convention? Mm. It was an RPG con convention, unfortunately. Not as fun as a cranberry convention, but I made the most of it. He, he was running a game, and he killed my PC mercilessly. Ah, good of good man. Very yeah. Good. Tell all listeners of the mystic work you do for my Peerless magazine. Well, I read all the incredible stories, and I try to find content in the stories that is gameable for Dungeon Crawl Classics role-playing game. And then I take that content and I write statistics um, for items or spells and lately monsters uh, so that judges can work them into their games. Yes, this is the game that Goodman invented. It is indeed. Mm. Answer me this. What is the most challenging to bring to life with numbers of all the monsters? Oh, yeah. So some have definitely been easier than others. The, the hardest one, I think, is in uh, issue six from the story Calacask's Woman. And uh, this is a, a Ben Hus story by John C. Hawking. Uh, he's yeah. in most, most of the issues with these Ben Hus stories. And, you know, this, uh, this creature was called the Wall of Demons in the story. And it was uh, sort of a, a, a cloud that led to uh, another dimension. I think they, they call, he called it a, a sliver of another world. And so it was such a broad thing. It seemed like it should be an encounter or even a mini adventure getting stuck in this wall of demons. And it was a real challenge how to take something so broad and just narrow it down to a stat block to treat it like a monster. You know, how do you take an adventure and make it a monster, almost? So that was the toughest one for me, I think. I think I almost understand what you mean. <laughs> Very interesting. Hmm. How do you select which monster or item to turn into numbers? Well, it's got to be evocative. Uh, it has to be new. Um, for example, if it's something that a gamer would already be familiar with, I'm, I'm not inclined to write it up. I, I want to write something up that a judge can use to uh, surprise their players with. Um, so uh, it also helps if the author gives me a little bit to go on. You know, naming a creature isn't enough generally. I, I want to see, at least have a hint how the author envisions the creature or the item and then... I take their, their words as sort of a launch pad. Monsters must be well described to exactly. paint vivid, horrifying images within your brain. Yes. What is the most dangerous of the monsters that you've conjured with numbers? Oh, so there are some pretty deadly beasties uh, you'll find in the different issues, but I think the deadliest one is also in issue six. And uh, this is in the story, The Feathered Shroud from our managing editor, you might know him, Howard Andrew Jones. 
Yes, yes, I know Jones. This is a, a, a story of his, and uh, he had this horse-sized bird in it. Um, and I can't remember if he called it the blue egret mat matron or if I named it that, but it was sort of a large mother bird. And there's one, uh, if I remember right, the story has to do with uh, one of the, the matron's chicks being stolen and uh, taken by these villagers. And, and some of the villagers want to mistreat it and, and some want to bring it back. And anyway, it gets back to the matron and uh, one of the villagers that wanted to mistreat it sort of comes along, I think, as a uh, try to use it a bargaining chip or something like, like, like this. And the matron says to him, uh, here's my gift to you, and then disintegrates him, just turns him into golden <laughs> ash. <laughs> As the yeah, guy smiling. Humor. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is a, uh, a monster for the gamers out there where um, the player has to make a, a DC 22 will save, so very difficult, um, or be reduced to golden ash should they provoke the wrath of the blue egret matron. <laughs> so she's tough. Most amusing. Tell me, Terry, what you do while not laboring for me. Ooh, so when I'm not laboring for you, I try to uh, write adventures, uh, encounters uh, for Goodman Games. Um, I help with the tournament generally. And uh, that's my sort of Goodman Games life. And then for my day job, I design hard disk drives. So I'm a physicist. Ah, a, a miracle worker, a <laughs> mystic, uh, mystic fashioner of arcane objects. Something like that. Yes, I believe I understand. Is there anything more you wish to say to our loyal viewers? Uh, people should buy your magazine. That's, yes. that's what I think. Yes, this is very true. <laughs> buy my magazine. Terry, it has been a delight. Of course, the, the pleasure is all mine, Skull. Yes, as it should be. Yes. This interview is at an end. That is all.